Right then, so uh, I've been asked by a few people to um, basically show how I get stuff painted quickly for battle reports, etc. Um, so um, the way I do that is by using Games Workshop contrast paints. So what this allows you to do is get stuff painted to a um, battle ready standard particularly quickly and uh, you can do it by batch painting and um, or individual you can knock models out in <clears throat> under 30 minutes which really obviously aids with getting battle reports done and filmed and out onto YouTube various other sources particularly quickly now um, this is a technique that is used by myself in order to get models as I say ready for games if there's a specific time frame involved it obviously saves a lot of aggro um, and really obviously it's a question of do the models to a basic standard get them based and obviously from two or three foot away on a camera perfectly good uh, likewise if you're more about gaming than you are about the hobby stroke painting side then again you can get fantastic results that from three four foot away when you're stood there and you've got your models on the table um, they look perfectly fine perfectly acceptable um, they'll pass all tournament rules as regards uh, point scoring etc uh, not so much on necessarily on soft scores to the point of um, extra levels but it also what it allows you to do which is often what I do is get them ready for table get them ready for a battle report and then subsequently as and when time permits go back and add the layers because that's the other fantastic thing with the contrast paints it'll give you the base color with a little bit of a wash um, and get them ready and then effectively what I would normally do for my own armies that type of thing where I want to spend a bit more time is I would then go and do various layers highlighting over brushing dry brushing various other techniques uh, sort of wet palette use and so on and so forth to get it to that next step where you might say well okay look that's a lot better put it in a cabinet or I'm proud of that one or whatever so this really is either for those people who want to get models done quickly or who are just starting out uh, maybe never really used contrast paints before um, or whether they just want to get the models done get them on the table so the models that we're going to be showcasing in this little series of videos are from a small company uh, called Oathsworn Miniatures and they make probably one of the most fantastic skirmish games uh, known to man which is Burrows and Badgers now this is an anamorphic uh, skirmish game so you basically you've got uh, humanoid sized hedgehogs, lizards, foxes, badgers etc all tooled up in a sort of um, early medieval style so swords, shields, bows, crossbows um, there are some black powder weapons but only things like flintlocks um, so you haven't got um, so it's sort of like high fantasy-esque rabbit wars what could be better than that uh, but anyway it's a great game so do check out the website oswarminiatures.com um, also um, they've got a very active Facebook page as well so do check that out I'll put a link in the bit below so what we're going to paint today are two or three miniatures okay I'll uh, probably do one per video so they'll be nice and short and concise this one obviously is a little bit longer because this is the first one um, and I'm just going to basically show you how to paint my miniatures particularly quickly so it'll be a full live video once the painting starts uh, what I've done to get them all to the early stage uh, ready for painting is uh, they come as <coughs> metal sculpts other than the massive ones which are actually resin but the majority of the range is all metal there's no building very little flash clean up to do um, absolutely gorgeous individual one piece sculpts okay so basically arrive come with the correct size base so all we've done super glue them to the base we have then um, undercoated them with Mechanicus Grey Games Workshop spray paint <coughs> waited for that to dry and then what we've then done is with the Wraith Bone Contrast spray we have sprayed over the top in order to basically allow the Wraith Bone to sit on the raised areas and filter through and create some light gradient uh, where the Mechanicus will still show through at the lower levels and the bits that are not seen from eye line. 
Okay, uh, what I've also done is I've then used a Vallejo um, Saddle Brown. Uh, the only reason I use Saddle Brown is because for this range, that's the rim I have chosen for the bases. Um, so I've basically painted all of the bases in Saddle Brown. Other than that, we will start and uh, as I say, it'll be a live continuous feed. So basically you'll see every step and how long it takes to get to the end result. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Um, if you do, please do subscribe. There are battle reports available on the website, uh, on the website, on the YouTube channel as well. And obviously do subscribe because if you don't subscribe, you won't see what's coming. And uh, obviously again, feel free to comment because uh, always pleased to see the comments and uh, specifically the nice ones. Okay, so just, uh, you know, at the end of the day, this is a, a basic level tutorial. Uh, it's not even really a tutorial as such. It's just showing you what effects you can get from contrast paint. So there we are. Uh, so enjoy and I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we have our first model. This is a Hedgehog Warrior S. Okay, so she's armed in uh, full armor, um, armed with an axe and a shield. Okay, and she comprises of a medium sized model for the purposes of burrows and badgers. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is basically get some paint on her. So here goes. So with contrast paints, best thing to do is get a ball bearing, uh, basically put the ball bearing in the pot, and then effectively that will activate the paint better. So that will give you a better spread. Saves a lot of extra shaking. Okay, and we will go with Basilican Grey to start off with. Okay, so Basilican Grey we, we're going to use for the axe. Okay, so we literally will just plonk that on. Now, motif wise, there is a sort of fern on the axe itself motif, so we're going to try and avoid that as best we can. Um, because we've used wraith bone, it is always important to have a pot of wraith bone base paint nearby uh, because obviously if you need to touch anything up, you can do so. Now the other thing with contrast paints is if you basically place the brush where you want it to start and pull away, um, and you've just got to be a bit careful. I mean, again, the more layers you put on, the darker it will go. Also with contrast paints, they will vary quite considerably depending on what your base color is uh, or your undercoat. So I'm using Wraith Bone as it shows up a bit better. Gray Sear is a bit darker. Corax White's even brighter. Okay, but we've gone with Wraith Bone. So we've applied the coat already to the axe. We're then gonna go, so we're gonna move away from the axe now. So I could do the handle. Uh, but obviously because the paint is already uh, wet there because it acts very similar to an ink so it will take a bit of drying time so we're going to go on to the armor which actually is not next to the bit we've just done so again we're going to apply a decent amount to our brush and we're just going to place it on the model and draw away And also make sure you're using a, a decent brush because this is a very high liquid content paint. If you're not using a good quality brush, it will literally go everywhere. So again, make sure that you are using something that is relatively new or in good order. Okay, so we're now applying the paint so we're going to have a gold breastplate on here and then we're also what we're going to do we're going to do the rest of the armor um, so we're going to apply that up onto the pauldrons the elbow guards and the gauntlets Again, try to be as neat as you can, but again, by having the rose bone to hand, if you do go over stuff, you can always go over and touch up 
with the wraith bone and come back to it. Okay. The other thing as well, once you start playing around with the contrast paints, you do get very different effects based on, as I said before, the base color. Uh, but also some paints will mix better with others and also some will cover other paints. So again, again with the lighter colors to start with, will allow for other colors to paint over. Okay. Right, so then we've got the gold armor going on nicely there. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do with the shield is I'm thinking I'm probably going to come back to that. Um, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do with that shield yet color-wise. So it is always good to have a bit of a plan when you start off. Um, and I did have a plan, which was I'm going to paint it gold within a blue circle in the middle. But as it looks a bit like a sun, um, I'm thinking I'll probably do it the other way around and do the outside and then touch up maybe. So in fact, yeah, so let's do that. So we're just gonna, so we're gonna go with the golden sun, which would tie in then with the armor plates. Okay, right. So again, we want to pick a colour now that's going to be away from the area we have done. So we're now going to do the flesh of the hedgehog. So for this one, I'm going to go with Dark Oath. Okay, so this is, um, I suppose, a sort of beast man colour, uh, if you're familiar with Games Workshop models. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, this one here. So we're going to do, again, we're going to basically just work the flesh and the nose and then the hands Okay, so with the flesh applied, what we're now going to do is drop onto some leather work. So for this, we're going to be using snake bite leather, and this is going to be for the grip of the axe. Just double checking the rest of the model for anything else that and we do have like an underskirt so I'm thinking I might just go with it on that as well um, just for again giving a bit of a contrast to the color of the armor so let's put that on there so we're just gonna carefully as careful as we can, just try and skirt around the armour, 
push it into the recesses to make sure we get full coverage. The other advantage as well, if you do make a mistake, you can literally just put your finger on it and then wipe it off because it is. Um, but again, if that doesn't work, you can always drop back to your race bone and touch up at a later point. Okay. Okay, so we're now going to go with another bright colour, which is going to be Volopus Pink. As she's female, we're going to be very stereotypical, and we're going to give her a nice, vibrant, um, dark pink cloak. Um, also, for things like battle reports, obviously what you want them to do is stand out as best as can. So, again, that's why we're going with this. Nice, vibrant colour. If you're familiar with burrows and badgers, she's going to get a penalty to her concealment for the fact that she's wearing this bright pink cloak. Only joking. Okay, so let's have a. So as you'll be able to see there, contrast paint will start to pull in areas which will give us that natural shadow that's how it effectively works and these miniatures are great because they're so highly detailed and metal um, the paint just literally sort of attracts itself to the model um, they really are so easy to paint Okay, so there we have so far. <clears throat> Okay, so now on to the, uh, so we've still got the fur to do, which we're going to use Gore Grunter fur for. Uh, this is a nice animalistic colour. And um, <clears throat> this is effectively the underside of the hedgehog. So not the spines. On this model we've got legs and arms to do.
also the fur around the actual front part of the face. Nice blue, <coughs> very bright blue. Basically, she's got a jewel which, uh, or brooch which is holding her cloak on. Okay, so we're just gonna pop that bright blue in there. Lastly, I'm going to use Saigor Brown. Oh, sorry, the blue was Talisar Blue. Okay, so uh, Talisar Blue. And then we are now going to use Saigor for the spines. So the last thing I'm going to go back and tidy up. So last step is just to tidy up any uh, misses and bits that we need to. So I've just covered the little bit of the... Uh, or alternatively, because we've used the overspray technique um, to give us the darker areas, what I'm actually going to do, I'm just on the axe where the fern is, I'm just going to go back over with Rafe Bone. And the reason I'm going to do that is just to ensure that the gold on the axe stands out. And then that way. And then the last colour before that is Black Templar. Um, so this one, I'm literally just going to dot the eyes. Okay, so. So I'll just pop, start at the back and just pull forward slightly. Right, and then um, go back to the Nasdaq yellow for A second coat of the Nasdaq yellow so I really want to make it pop this will give it sort of like a golden an orangey golden tinge to the armour So with this application, I'm not covering everything I've done, but effectively just going over various bits, and that will give it again like, almost like a, a contrast highlight. So just covering the tops of the areas. Okay. thing with contrast is it can pull away a little bit from certain points on the model which is why I like to go over and just double check um, so we had a little bit there on the top of the, the head um, so again just reapply the paint
Okay, so short of just finishing the basing, that is it. So what we have now is one battle ready. Hedgehog Warrior for Burrows and Badgers. Um, so what I'll do, I'll stop the video now because this has been a live all the way through. So uh, this is how long it takes to paint one model. Um, just need the base to dry a little bit more before we apply some Mod Podge and some basing material. Um, I tend to use a mix from Geek Gaming. Um, I have added some static green grass to it as well. Um, but again, that's the basing I've decided to use for all my burrows and badgers. So we'll apply that and show you the finished article. Okay, thanks for watching.